Okay, sample problem 210. Okay, so we've got this force here in three-dimensional space. We only have its scalar value or its magnitude. And we've got some coordinates of different points. Okay, what is the question? A force F with a magnitude of 100 Newton is applied at the origin of the axes, um, X, Y, Z shown. The line of action of F passes through a point A, whose coordinates are, what's it, what, what are the coordinates of that point? Well, what are coordinates? Just tells us how far do you move in the X, in the Y, and the Z. So it's 3, and this one is 4, okay, and then you go up 5. So 3, 4, 5. That's its coordinates there. Let's write it in. 3, 4, 5 in meters. Okay, so the question is determine A, the X, Y, and Z scalar components of F. Determine the scalar components of F. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We see that, well, we saw in the previous videos that there are a few ways for us to get the scalar components and, and effectively convert into um, a vector with with the i j k components. The one is if you've got well, the one is if you've got this force and then you've got the angles uh, theta x, which is the angle between the force and the x axis, theta y. These are the direction cosines, remember, and theta z, right? That's one way, and then you say 100 cos theta x gives me that component. 100 uh, cos theta y gives me the y component, etc. That's the one way. But we don't have those uh, angles. Um, and then the other way, I'm going to get to the way that we can do it last. But the other way, remember, is for you to project this force onto the xy plane so that you've got you've got this xy projection right you project it onto the xy plane and then you project that projection onto the x axis and that projection onto the y axis and then you also can get the z component but we don't have that information either what do we have we've got two points passing through the line of action or or rather the line of action passes through two points so remember those three different methods and the method that we use here is if we've got two points that are along the line of action of the force then we can get the unit vector we get that unit vector and we multiply it by this magnitude that unit vector then gives this force a direction so how are we going to get um, a unit vector? Well, we essentially say the position vector R over the magnitude of that position vector. Right? It's, this position vector is... Um, what is a position vector? It's how far do you walk from this point to that point. So I, I walk 3x, 3 in the x direction, I walk... Uh, 4 in the y direction and 5. Okay, so that's what we have here. So guys, any two points, any two points, if that's A, if that's B, um, in three any, any one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional space, a position vector tells you how to get from A to B in X, Y, Z space. Okay? The other way of, of um, calculating this uh, is by saying, okay, well, what is, what's my A coordinate? So I've got AX, AY, AZ, right? So that could be 111, could be 101, minus 10, minus 20, 10, right? It could be any three coordinates. And this the same, BX, BY, BZ. And the way that I calculate that position vector R is simply by saying final final minus initial bx minus ax that's in the i direction plus by minus ay in the g 
direction plus BZ minus AZ in the K multiplied by the unit vector K. So this is my position vector. You'll see this is exactly what happens here. 3 minus 0 gives me 3. 4 minus 0, right? Remember this is 0, 0, 0. So final point minus initial point. 3 minus 0, 4 minus 0, 5 minus 0 gives me this position vector. Okay, so make sure that you know how to calculate that because you're going to get problems where this first point is not the origin. It's not a 0, 0, 0. It could be a 1, 1, 1 or a 1, 9, 10 or whatever. Then you need to know how to calculate a position vector. And then to calculate the unit vector, we take that vector and divide it by its magnitude. 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared square root. Now we've got our unit vector and we multiply that by the 100 and we've got We've got our, we've converted this now into a vector with, in terms of i, j, and k. And we know that the x, y, and z components are simply the 42, the 56, and the 70, right? These, the, those are the scalar components. Okay, very good. Um, how about I stop here and then I'll move on to part B and C in the next video.